Hey guys, Desolate Magic here, and two days ago we got an announcement about the only universes beyond that some people might not have a problem with. Interesting that that's the baseline these days. It's of course universes beyond Fallout Commander. So if that's only vaguely familiar to you, let me just throw up the first one, Wasteland, right here. It's Vault Boy. No, his name's not Fallout Boy. Stop calling him that. That's a crappy band for angry 12-year-olds. So I know more about the world of Fallout than my own city. And if you're in the same camp, join me on this journey. So I'm still not going to buy this because it's a Universes Beyond Commander product. It is probably going to be outrageously expensive, plus I'm still boycotting them. I cannot possibly, no matter what they make, give that company money. I don't care if they do another secret layer with cute little cats on it. I'm, I'm just not going to give them money. It's not worth it. If you do because you just absolutely adore the world of Fallout, then cool. I would just advise against it. Like, you don't need this. And the way things are going and looking towards the next five years, hey, I may or may not run a prepper channel called Emergency Survival Tips. Go subscribe. I just blew past 5,000 subs and my top video has over 100,000 views. Why am I mentioning that? Because Fallout! But um, yeah, I would focus on self-defense items, whatever's legal in your area, emergency food water filters, and other things to keep you and your family safe in case of a very large-scale emergency. And obviously, the number one way to prepare is to play Fallout, uh, all three of the good games. <laughs> That'll piss some people off, but you know I'm right. So Fallout 3, mind-blowing. Fallout New Vegas, uh, made by a slightly different company, but um, better in most ways, worse in a couple. Pretty much the fan favorite. Then we've got Fallout 4, which was very tame, very oriented towards um, joystick use, unfortunately. Still good, still mediocre DLC, eh. And then there was Fallout 76, an MMO built on the wrong engine that you could just cheat at and failed miserably, I hope lost them tons of money. Just poorly conceived from end to end, absolute trash, untested, low budget, just clueless everything, and most of the best lore is in it, which really pisses me off. I was going to say, I'm going to play it right off the bat, it, no, no matter what, day one I'm signing up, I might even just jump off this channel and just change my gaming channel to 100% Fallout all day, because I'm like, this is going to be the biggest game ever. I mean, look at Elder Scrolls Online. Even that was pretty big and that wasn't that great and i think the latest we have after that is uh, a sequel to fallout 4 like a true sequel is going to come out sometime they are working on it right around the time of launching fallout 4 they're working on like fallout 5 so just saying concept writing lore yeah they already started come on uh, before that, there was uh, other Fallout games that are, you know, really old. I, I think if you got a nostalgia for it, you could play it now, but otherwise I wouldn't jump into it. Like, I played Morrowind on a modern engine, but still same old problems, and it I wouldn't wish that on anyone, but boy, that was like the first RPG I played that just blew my mind clear out the back of my head. And I mentioned that as well, because Bethesda makes both Fallout and the Elder Scrolls series. That's right, unstoppable juggernaut that still managed to say, we're Bethesda, we can get away with anything, which I call the Google Glass effect. It doesn't have to be good, we already have a monopoly. It doesn't have to be good, people love us, they'll just buy it anyway. Bit of a popular trend in the last five years in gaming, and uh, yeah, they managed to make an absolute flop in Fallout 76, so I hope there's no references to Fallout 76 on these cards, but if there is, I probably wouldn't know. Didn't play it, didn't touch it, don't know much about it, but, uh, alright, so we got Wasteland. Pretty expensive. Um, how much is this worth? I don't know. I mean, even if I saw a pre-order number right now, I don't think it's very smart. And I guess the last thing to say before we really jump into spoilers, I wanted to give the background, because this is such a huge thing, and not everybody knows about this, you know? Some of y'all watching are like 13, so I mean, hmm, when did New Vegas come out? I, I think you weren't born yet. But uh, yeah, this is available March 8th, 2024, so you got a long, long way to wait for this. I doubt any respectable site even like has pre-orders up for this right now, because who knows if they'd even be able to honor them. Now one more thing, do I think they should have come out with this around the Christmas shopping season instead of Lord of the Rings? Absolutely. 100%. This is more recent, more beloved, and has, I guarantee, nearly the same, if not more, crossover with the Magic community. But, well, can't undo it now. So, uh, next up we got Arcane Signet. There's your commander staple, it's real simple, just, you know, two drop taps for any color in your commander's color identity, which should be pretty much the whole deck. And of course, it's uh, a Vault Dweller wearing a Pip Boy, which has Vault Boy on it, and he's wearing a Pip Boy that has Vault Boy on it, who may or may not, I can't really tell, be wearing a Pip Boy. And then it's drawn in like weird Ren and Stimpy graphics, so uh, there's a lot to unpack there, but there's also a lot of cards to cover, so let's, let's just get into it. Next up, we got Crucible of Worlds, which is the GEC, the um, Garden of Eden creation kit, which is supposed to take, like, really contaminated ground, unfertile soil, and just magically make it, well, you, you see the art. 
didn't play a really big factor in Fallout 4. In fact, I'm not sure there is one, which I was kind of disappointed by. Uh, very, very limited exposure to it in uh, New Vegas. I don't remember how heavily Fallout 3 um, covered it. Oh, then there's the Fallout mobile game. I should probably mention that. I think they had Gex in that. I'm not sure. It was mostly like in a vault, but I thought it was there. Didn't play it. I feel like I really should, but it hurts not that good. But remember, there was like a Skyrim knockoff Elder Scrolls mobile game that was complete trash. Just because it's in a series I like doesn't mean I'm going to pre-order it or play it when it comes out or two years later. Just saying. So this one is you may play lands from your graveyard, so that's pretty cool. Very fitting. Absolute 100 out of 100 lore hit right there. So I'm going to pause the spoilers right now because probably five minutes into the video you're wondering this as much as I was. So I'm not actually going to leave this till the end, but there are four commander decks, so totally pre-made, you know, 99 plus one. But are there booster packs, or is this 100% pre-made? Well, there are booster packs. So let's start with those. It, it looks like it's collector's boosters only, so they're going to be insanely expensive. That looks like a 12-pack. I'm sure they'll exceed 30 bucks a pack, easily. Will they resell for more than that? That I have doubts about, because I bet these are going to be, you know, 35 a pack at least, would be my guess. In a box, maybe lower, but remember, if you're going to flip it on eBay, you're looking at 15% minimum fees. They, they like to hide the fees. People say it's 12 9 It's not. They sneak them in there somehow. I'm sure it's illegal. Then you got to pay shipping. So, razor thin margins, even if this goes bonkers and it's 20 30% above. Just saying. Not a smart idea. Now, the commander decks themselves, though. Historically, those products have sold higher than retail in general, but not by much. This might be a little different because I could see somebody grabbing this who used to play Magic and they're like, oh, it's all one theme. It's not, oh, I'm going to get a couple singles of, you know, a completely different universe and I'm going to throw into my commander deck that has all characters from the Magic universe. People are still very much opposed to that in general, in large amounts, not everyone. So speaking of the commander decks, first up we got science exclamation mark because haha, ha, funny outdated meme references. How, how do you do, fellow kids? Welcome to posting cringe in the chat of the coast, where, where they're hip and, and fly. Anyway, um, it's three-color Merca. And of course, Dr. Madison Lee is, I guess I shouldn't say a spoiler, but uh, she works for the Institute. I thought she was the doctor inside the vault where you gotta save the kid from the virus, or, you know, not if you are literally Satan. But uh, yeah, you can see, energy's back which people really didn't like. It makes sense, though, because energy is a huge part of Fallout 4. I should mention, she's in Fallout 4. So, 2-3 three for 3, one of each color, legendary creature, human scientist, and whenever you cast an artifact spell, you get one energy. If you tap, uh, pay one energy, so both. Uh, target creature gets plus one, plus one against trample and haste on turn. Not bad, not great, but not bad. And then uh, if you tap her and pay three energy, you can draw a card. Once again, not bad, nice utility card. And then if you tap her and pay five, return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Now that's some power right there. You can get some stuff done. Is this good enough to be a commander grade card? I mean, the power level is determined by your playgroup, so the answer is yes or no, depending entirely on you. <laughs> it's out of Watsi's hands. Isn't that nice? Isn't that better managed? So energy was kind of neat, but not having a way to drain your opponent's energy and all the overpowered cards that supported it made people think that energy was inherently bad the last time we saw it in uh, Space India, the set. Uh, not true. It was actually kind of neat and a good fundamentally sound idea. They just implemented it like crap and went way overboard and then had no way to interact with it because that is how Mark Rosewater personally and specifically and almost solely from what I heard wanted it to be. So why was there no four cost colorless card called Feedback Loop that drains all of the opponent's energy and for each energy counter removed this way they take one damage? Because Mark Rosewater. And that would have solved a lot of problems back then. So next up, we've got Hail Caesar. I probably don't need to tell you which one that's from, but Fallout New Vegas. Okay, fine. Kaiser. That's the last time I'll say it, then I'm going to say it right. Why does he keep pronouncing it wrong? Probably the brain tumor. I like to nickname him Mr. Open the Tent, Wave High, Ignore the Dialogue, Launch a Fat Man into His Face, and Freaking Run. Not really a short nickname, but anyway, this is uh, three color red, white, black. So we got Caesar, Legion's Emperor. It's a legendary creature, human soldier, and whenever you attack, you may sack another creature, because of course, when you do, choose two. Ooh. Create two 1-1 one, one red and white soldier creature tokens with haste that are tapped in attacking. You draw a card and lose one life, or Caesar's Legion Emperor, something like that, deals damage equal to the number of creature tokens you control the target opponent. So, token flood, it's a legion, it makes sense, expendable, sack stuff, evil, bad colors, yes. 
lower flavor, accurate, yay. People would have actually rioted outside their headquarters if this was like some, I don't even know what I'm talking about, just completely inaccurate, we're going to take our own license thing. I I'm glad they worked uh, close enough with the people to get this right, or they had people who know the games design them. Not sure which, but it's a hell of a difference from Lord of the Rings, where they're like, let's just make the characters in blackface because diversity, and then not hire any black people. That's how they do it out in Seattle. Next up, oh, here it is. We've got Mutant Menace, and that's the Mothman from 76. I at least know that much. He started a cult. It's a whole thing. It doesn't make much sense. So another three color, we got uh, blue, green, black... And he's a four-cost legendary creature insect mutant, 3-3 three, three flying, and when uh, whenever the, mo the wise mothman enters the battlefield or attacks, each player gets a rad counter. Ooh. Whenever one or more non-land cards are milled, put one put a 1-1 one, one counter on each of up to X target creatures where X is the number of non-land cards milled this way. I really hope rad isn't just like poison counters with another name, but I very strongly suspect that that's the case. And that sucks. And it's also a mill deck. This is the most toxic, annoying thing, and they put Menace right in the name. I'm just moving on. This is awful. If you play this, you're awful. And finally, we got Scrappy Survivors featuring Dogmeat. So this is a white-green-red deck, and we've got Dogmeat Ever Loyal, 3 cost 3, 3 legendary creature, Doggo. And when Dogmeat enters the battlefield, mill 5 cards, then return an aura or equipment card from your graveyard to your hand. Wow, another equipment deck in white-red base. I've never seen that before. Whenever a creature you control that's enchanted or equipped attacks, create a junk token. It's an artifact with sacrifice this artifact. Exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Activate only as a sorcery. Ooh, a little bit of a gamble there. I like it. That should actually make its way into the main game in a set. Like, that's actually really good. So one more thing, if you caught it on top there, it includes Collector Booster Sample Pack, which is a miniature collector booster. Uh, just a justification up the price, by the way. And two legendary traditional foils. Are they uh, random or are they static? I think they're just the Commander front cards, like the one in the alternate or whatever. I don't know. I'd have to watch their stupid podcast thing to find out, and I think we all know I'm not willing to do that. So back to the other card spoilers, we've got Command Tower, because of course. Little Fallout 4 reference there. We've all built something like that. Then we've got Over Encumbered, the number one problem with the game. I don't even play a Bethesda game anymore without just typing the console command right off the bat to uh, jack it up to about 5,000 carry weight. You know who did it right? Cyberpunk 2077. Good balance. While it's still an issue, It's you gotta try to screw it up badly enough to carry too much. So two cost white enchantment aura, enchant opponent, whenever over encumbered enters the battlefield, enchanted opponent creates a clue token, a food token, and a junk token. <laughs> nice. Why would you want to give those to your opponent? But at the beginning of combat, on enchanted opponent's turn, that player may pay one for each artifact they control. If they don't, creatures can't attack this combat. Oh, so they gotta get rid of them to be able to move again. Oh, that is vicious. This is one of the best curses I've ever seen. Too bad they didn't actually write curse on it. Consistency, what's that? So look at this frame, it's a normal Magic the Gathering card frame. Next up we got Radstorm. This is the uh, showcase frame, or let's just call it a trim because that's what it is. Oh, we're back, it's Storm. Great. The Storm Scale is called the Storm Scale for a very good reason. I guess Mark doesn't realize that and he's the one who created it. It's basically a list of mechanics that they should never print again because um, everybody hated them. But this, that's not what it is, shut up. That is what it is. So, uh, it's a four-cost blue instant rare storm proliferate. Great. What do those do? I'm not going to explain it. You would just quit the game on the spot. If you, you know, you know, and if you don't, you don't. So next up, we got Alpha Deathclaw. This is an interesting style. This looks to be from a very, very older uh, Fallout game. I mean, I haven't seen much from, from the others, but this looks like it, and the font doesn't look like anything modern. I mean, this looks very 90s video game, you know? So this is a six cost, uh, green, black, creature, lizard, mutant, menace, trample, six, six. Yep, they are vicious. And when he enters the battlefield or becomes monstrous, ooh, destroy target permanent and pay seven to make a monstrous. And then he gets four bigger. Yeah, Alpha Death Claws, I think like Albino Alpha Death Claws, one of the most powerful in the entire game, at least in Fallout 4. I think they're much more powerful than a behemoth, actually. Oh, then we've got coming in from Fallout New Vegas, Mr. House President and CEO. Three-cost legendary artifact creature human. <laughs> artifact human. 
funny references. Anyway, 04, whatever you roll for or higher. Oh, God, they've got a Fallout dice-based mechanic. I love it. Uh, create a 3-3 three, three colorless robot artifact creature token if you rolled 6 or higher. Instead, create a token and treasure token. Well, the, the same token, I should say. And then uh, pay 4, tap it, roll a 6-sided die, plus an additional 6-sided die for each mana from treasures spent to activate this ability. Love it. Absolutely love it, as long as it stays the hell out of standard. So, in other words, I love it. Otherwise, dice rolling is just stupid random chaos, which it, that's kind of what you want in Commander if you're playing it right. <laughs> Wink. Next up, Nuke Golem Vending Machine. Hell yeah. Three cost colorless artifact uncommon. Uh, pay one, tap it, create a food token, and then whenever you sack a food, create a tap treasure token. Because when you pop up with a bottle, you get a bottle cap, and the bottle caps are the currency in this world. Next up, Soul Ring. It's one drop taps for uh, two. Everybody hates it. Probably should be banned from Commander. Just kidding. Well, not really. It probably should. Uh, this is going to be expensive. What is even in the art? I mean, a vaguely ring-shaped exit to, to like, a, a vault? They were really reaching for this one. It's a ring, and when you open it, the sun blinds you for a bit while your eyes adjust. I mean, sure, but really? Oh, by the way, the name of our sun isn't the sun. It's soul. That, that, a lot of people don't know that. That's where the term solar comes from. <laughs> anyway, Vault 101 birthday party. Um... I'm going to say Fallout 3. I think I'm wrong, though. I think there's multiple birthday parties, honestly. But, uh, yeah, it's a four-cost uh, white saga. Create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token and a food token. Nice. And then 2 and 3, you may put an aura or equipment card from your hand or graveyard onto the battlefield. If an equipment is put onto the battlefield this way, you may attach it to a creature you control. So, obviously, this is in the uh, dog meat deck. And it's here because, I mean... The liability and the susceptibility to, like, control when you're doubling down on auras put onto creatures is huge, so they're offsetting it by making it absolutely amped up to the max. Next up, we got VATS, the uh, Vault-Assisted Targeting System, I think? Vault Tech, probably, actually, is what it is. Uh, so it's a four-cost double black instant with split second. I think that means nothing can be put on the stack above it. Uh, then choose any number of target creatures with equal toughness. Destroy the chosen creatures. Oh, that is vicious. Situational but vicious. You could just wipe out a line of tokens, which I assume is what they were going for. Next up, Intelligence Bobblehead. Please tell me this is a full cycle. It almost has to be. Although full, I mean, your definition of that, there's a lot of these actually. It's not just one per stat. I think in this product it probably will be, but uh, there, I think there's like 24 of them or something. So, uh, three cost artifact bobblehead, tap add one mana of any color, so a little overcosted mana rock, but if you pay five, tap it, draw X cards, where X is the number of bobbleheads you control. Oh, yes. Next up, Feral Ghoul, which I, I assume is pretty much most of the employees at Watsi at this point that still work there. Just like being a developer for the Azure platform, you literally have to be dead inside. It says so on the job requirements. So it's a three cost black 2-2 two, two menace. No, I'm not one. I, people are going to ask. No, hell no, I wouldn't touch it. They tried at my work, but um, no, nope, I'll leave that to the dev team. So menace, whenever another creature you control dies, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Feral Ghoul. Okay, that's pretty good actually, with menace especially. And then whenever uh, Feral Ghoul dies, each opponent gets a number of rad counters equal to its power. That cannot possibly be in fact. It can't. It just can't. Now, the fact that the reminder text isn't on this card when this is a normal trim card. I'm going to have to go actually look at the article, aren't I? Because even now I'm curious, and you probably are too. Okay, all they have said is rad counters are player counters that mill and damage you. You know what? Their explanation sucks. Here's the rad counter. So we got radiation at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase. Okay. If you have any rad counters, mill that many cards for each non... Oh, there you go. For each non-land card milled this way, you lose one life in a rad counter. So about two-thirds of the time on average, depending upon your deck. I'll be honest with you. I'm probably going to do what I can do to pick up just a copy of just that token. <laughs> That's within my budget. So next up, it's the Wise Mothman. Uh, we already read this. It's, you know, the front card, obviously. But this is the alternate trim of it. Uh, next up, we got Gary Clone. I remember this, but I don't remember from where, so I'm going to say it's probably Fallout 3. So he's a two-cost white creature, human citizen, one three with squad two. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may pay two any number of times. When this creature enters the battlefield, create that many tokens that are copies of it. Oh, yes. I don't think that's a new mechanic either, actually. Uh, whenever Gary Clone attacks, each creature you control named Gary Clone 
gets plus one plus one until end of turn. You know what? I think I remember a vague reference to this before Fallout 3, actually. All I've got to say is, Gary, come home. But Caesar, he can stay missing. Of course, we already saw this card, but this is the alternate version of it. Then, of course, we've got Rex Cyberhound. Of course, owned by the leader of the Kings, a Elvis impersonation gang. In Fallout New Vegas, so it's a three-color blue-white 2-2 legendary artifact creature robot dog, and when Rex Cyberhound deals combat damage to a player, they mill two cards and you get two energy. Well, without flying or unblockable and has a 2-2 on the ground, that ain't gonna happen except if you pay two energy, choose target creature card in a graveyard, exile it with a brain counter on it, and then activate this only as a sorcery. And then Rex has all activated abilities of all cards in exile with brain counters on them. Ooh, they had it right up until they effectively let you have multiple brains. That is not how that works. Gee, maybe Watsy was alarmed by the amount of text already on the card and left that part out. Yeah, that sounds like something that's always on their radar. Uh, next up, we got Dr. Madison Lee. If that doesn't just scream Red Alert 2 cutscene, I don't know what does. <laughs> I'm just like completely brought out of the uh, Fallout universe for a second there. Don't worry. Yuri has a plan. He's going into space. I had to. So anyway, that's the other front card, so let's move on. We got Idolized. Ooh. That is a reference from the Karma system, or Reputation system, I'm not sure which actually, in uh, New Vegas. It's a two-cost white aura enchant creature. Enchanted creature has whenever this uh, creature attacks alone, it gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of non-land permanents you control. Ooh. That is exalted on steroids. That's pretty spicy for two. Uh, that's the kind of card that you would probably need in just a random commander deck that's on color and uses stuff like that. Which means you're going to have one Fallout card in the middle of your Magic the Gathering deck. So yeah, I can see why people don't like that. Next up, we got the alternative dog meat with his cute little goggles. And then we've got a junk token. Um, I'm not a hoarder, you're a hoarder. Shut up. And uh, let's move on to lands. Oh look, a full art borderless. Hmm. That, it, it, it's been completely overdone since basically what i'd say either bfz or the second unset or pardon me third unset but if y'all already know what it is it says planes and it's white in a set that's very heavy on visuals i would absolutely say do this so it does make sense i kind of want one of each of these two so i might have to spring for an extra two bucks on top of the 50 cents for that token but wait, there's more. We've got another planes. Um, I, I do believe the first one was Fallout 4, of course, but this one, I don't know. It looks like a bunch of trains that like smashed into each other and derailed. I mean, that's like every Fallout game. Then we've got, uh, as an island, we've got dog meat and of course, um, what do they call him? The Soul Survivor, I think is his nickname. And it's Fallout 4 and it's right outside that bandit flotilla. The lighting and just everything on this, the way they drew it, the perspective, I kind of don't like anything about this. They, they kind of mangled this one. But then we've got an island. Oh, yes. Um, I'll guess that this is maybe Far Harbor from Fallout 4. It could legitimately be anywhere. Uh, then we've got a swamp, which that, that's got to be the Fallout 3 DLC. But based on the fact that he's wearing a uh, protective hazmat uh, and dog meets there, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think Follow 3 had a dog companion. Boy, I didn't know there'd be a test later and I had to study for this. That might just be him going into the, the glowing sea. Especially since the next swamp is almost definitely the glowing sea. I mean, it, it could be the Follow 3, or pardon me, Follow New Vegas DLC, uh, where you're going through the, what is that, the Great Divide? I think that's what it's called. It's, I mean, it's a Scott Staff album, but I think it's also probably the name of the thing in Fallout. I don't remember nothing flying like that. That's I'm pretty sure that's actually just from Metro Exodus and they screwed up. Which, if you've played Fallout and haven't played Metro Exodus, or if you've ever played Splinter Cell, either one, it is mandatory that you go play Metro Last Light and probably Metro Exodus 2. New Metro game coming up pretty soon. I am absolutely amped. Oh, I don't know why I said soon. Eventually. Anyway, uh, next up we got the Mountain. Um, I feel like I should know where that is, but I just don't. <laughs> He's in Power Armor. The dog's there. It's probably in Fallout 4. I'm not convinced this actually exists, to be honest. This looks like that Alaska hologram thing. I mean, I'm trying to go spoiler-free in case you haven't played the games. Uh, that's not from Fallout 4, though. And dog meat wearing dog armor, and most of these are from, if not all of them, from Fallout 4. And you know what? Apparently I just discovered that I might actually be blind. Oh my god, one like equals one prayer. That is clearly from Nuka World. I still don't know where. Overseer's office or that, that one mountain thing? It looks like they combined them. I don't know. Well, anyway, next up we got the forest, which I can almost guarantee 
Oh, I don't know about that. They got the wind generator, but otherwise I was going to say the monkey exhibit at uh, Nuka World. This could just legitimately be anywhere. There's like any settlement. I don't know. It looks built. I'm going to say it's a settlement. By the way, speaking of monkey, um, they just announced that the next uh, Universes Beyond tie-in for the Secret Lair is going to be Kong Skull Island. Just kidding. Uh, next up, Mountain. Um, I don't know. This looks like it's from Lord of the Rings. I don't know what the hell this is. It's some highway in some Fallout game somewhere, but for some reason the telephone poles are still intact. I don't know what's going on here. And then we've got another forest. Very odd order these are in. Whoops. Um, where is that? That's probably not the Children of Adam. I don't know. You know what? There are no forests in the Fallout world. I think they just kind of phoned this one in. So as far as I can tell, that's all we know for now, other than the question on everybody's mind. When do the full previews begin? And that is February 20th, 2024. Remember, the global release is March 8th. That is really close. That's like two weeks out, which is like an older way to do it, but um, we'll see what leaks in between now and then. They are due to Commander launch parties, so if you want to, I don't know, pick this up and do a local thing, if your local store is even open, and if anybody wants to drop $100 on a one-day event, um, my guess is no. And my guess is actually 100 is probably a little bit low if this works the way I think, but um, yeah. 8th through the 10th, the whole weekend, apparently. Whatever. Well, you know what? If they release... Anything Fallout related in Arena as like a character or something, I'm buying it. Not for cash. I'm not insane. But I got gems and coins coming on my ears. Uh, you guys know I've been drafting like crazy. Um, I don't really love the set that's out right now. And every time I say that, I go like 7 and 0. Last night we went uh, 7 and 1 or 7 and 2. I don't remember. A lot of close calls, but man, was my deck vicious. It just, it had like four different concepts in full synergy. It was outrageous. I might stream later today, possibly. I'm doing a lot of work today, but I'm also kind of getting sick of it. Heck, in the middle of this video, just to get in the Fallout mood, I went and cooked some uh, spam that is about three years past expiration. And by expiration, I mean ridiculous uh, and inaccurate government propaganda that they have to print on the outside of the tin. And I made it with some extremely expired rice noodles. So uh, it was tasty. It was really good. I feel ready to go take on a Deathclaw, so um, instead I'm going to do laundry, but that's almost the same thing. So hey, thanks for watching everybody. Let me know, are you amped about it? Are you indifferent? Are you excited but not going to buy it? Uh, have you never played the Fallout games? Are you an aforementioned 13-year-old that's 1% of my, my demographic that's never played this before because you can't jump off of Fortnite? Just kidding, that doesn't exist, but for everybody else, uh, leave that down below. I'm very curious. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.